Doherty character is invaluable to popular newspapers. If he didn't exist, they'd have to invent him. And in a sense, they may have invented him. They may have encouraged this, I don't know. But you see, he, even though, by the way, no reader, no buyer would ever admit to this, that they are buying the newspaper because of this. But he is part of the package, part of the regular bit of a newspaper that people do unconsciously gravitate towards. He is the continual bad boy that can be used around which you can build a kind of profile, um, a soap opera itself. How old is he, Peter? What's his name? Is it S. Steele? Yeah. I want him to call him Peter. You wanted to? Would Lisa not let you? <laughs> and how old is he? How old are you? Two and a half. Exhilaration is the breeze that lifts us from the ground. And leaves us in another place whose statement is not found.
movies and, and, and books and films used to be, you know, tragedies used to be, you know, developed and, and, and screened and invented. Today we like our, our tragedy more real, you know, hotter and fresher. And um, Doherty lives in the sort of imprint of, of, the, of the great artists, you know, who have, who have died for drugs, you know, Jimi Hendrix, um, uh, Janis Joplin. And, you know, also in the era of, we have mostly, you know, boy bands today, sweet little boys, you know, who don't take drugs or trash hotel rooms. So, you know, Doherty was different. He, he was retro and fabulous. And, and when he started dating the most photographed woman in the world, uh, you know, the Doherty phenomenon was invented. But I think it's car crash journalism. I think we, we want to see somebody fall apart. And why is that, do you think? Well, that comes from a very, very dark place in the human soul. Schadenfreude, to take pleasure in, in the misery of others. It's exciting. For what reason did, did people used to go to public executions? You know, thousands of people would turn up to see people, people be hanged. And I, th I, think it's, I think it's for the same reason. He's in love with a rock and roll world. He's in love with a Kenny Stone world. He's in love with a Jenny Jones world, but he don't like his boy job, no. He's in love with a rock and roll world. He's in love with a Kenny Stone world. He's in love with a Jenny Jones world, but he don't like his boy job, no. I'm too, too vain and paranoid to be completely confident. You know I mean? All I'm thinking of really is how's my hair? 
have your hair. So I'm trying to find them looking in that mirror there without you sort of... Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, but she had that big nose bag in a taxi and crammed me right out. And what I'm doing in the jump station. Yeah. 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 Right, cheers, Ellen. Um. Cheers. <coughs> There's degrees of artifice to what I do, you know what I mean? But I don't manufacture feelings. I just... I don't really create emotional states. You know what I mean? I just take note of these apocalypses that occur in everybody's souls, and I sing about them again and again every night. That's all. That's hard enough, you know what I mean? I don't have to live through it every second. I'm not that person, you know what I mean? That, that isn't me. If you want, I said you a life story about a man who's at loggerheads with his past all the time. He's alive and he's living in purgatory. All he's doing is rooming in hotels and scooping up lots of wine. Oh, there was once a boy of life. Lived upon a knife He dug his share off everywhere But he never took a wife Yeah, how do they fuck forever? Fuck forever Fuck forever in Spanish is Jodete para siempre But it's not really good to right, say yeah, fuck I'm, forever I'm not gonna say it, I'm gonna sing it Yeah, I know <laughs> But I'm gonna say it, how is what? Fuck forever is um, Jodete Jodete Siempre. Siempre. Jodete puede siempre. But fuck is a, is a, a I don't know, it's a hard word no, to say. No, it's not fuck, but that doesn't mean fuck as in like, okay, you, you, on the bed, it means like fuck forever. Fuck forever. forever. Forget about forever. What is the meaning in English of this sentence, fuck forever? It's like another meaning. Forget about forever. Forget. Fuck it. Okay, so you, you have... Maybe you can translate like um, olvídate. Forget in Spanish is olvida. Olvida, but, 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 but not but in an informal way of forgetting, like, mm. be done with it, be done with it. Yeah, I understand you. No. Because jodete is like hard. Laura. It's like. Laura. Mm. Mm. Laura. Yeah. How is it? Uh, fuck is like motherfucker, you know, is a hard, yeah. hard word. Yeah. And the translate is jodete, and jodete is a, is a hard word. It's like a bad word. So everybody says it. Jodete, yeah. Jodete. Yeah, yeah. You're the son of a god. He was born to live like a mercenary. Personally, I think that's fine if you're in the right mind. Just to finish, I would like to do two things. Could you please say to the camera, yes, hello, we are the baby same boys. And this name, Miradas Dos. We are the baby shambles. Shambling along. Miradas Dos. Hey, again. Okay. Yeah. I get the sense that your motivation as artists is the, the search of freedom and liberty. Do you feel free at this time in your life? All there was once a boy of life He lived upon a night He took his share of everywhere But he never took a wife He was born to live like a mercenary Personally, I think that's fine doesn't care about Pete Doherty. I can't put that point across uh, viciously enough. We do not have personal emotional relationship. He is newsprint, he is money, he is a story.
Do you have any sense of how often you're in the papers and all no, that sort of thing? Definitely not. I definitely avoid the Do you? reality. Yeah, absolutely. But you talk to the press quite a lot. No, if they're in my face on my front door, nine times out of ten, I'll boo them out of the way or ignore them. But yeah, one time out of ten, someone will catch me on a certain bounce, I'll respond to them or I'll be on the run from something and I'll need a lift, I'll just jump in, fuck it. Gives a lift there, gives a lift there, because they're always about. Mm -hmm. Because people just wanted to look at you and you see what you're, you're up to, you know But what as mean? long as they can get hold of footage, like as long as they can get hold of footage, like pictures like they have been getting hold of, that's what they're going to go with, aren't they? Can you tell there? We're just garbling there. Just get clean and then it'll be fucking. Yeah, easy. well, I'm trying to, but Adam keeps booking fucking gigs. Well, you, you could go if you want to go. Yeah, but it's just like, always feel like, oh, you're letting those go to down America to that play. It would all change if you, everything was talking about would change in that, like that. I know, well, this weekend I was like, kind of detoxing. I know. I vomited that, 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 that bile. It's really that simple. Out, enjoying it, and then whack, someone comes and kicks you in the butt. It was really hard, and then you sort of recover from that. You know what I mean? And forget it happened, and then again, you're enjoying paradise again, and that's it. That's my life from one extreme to the other. And you're so glad, you're so glad when that pain goes. It's, it's like, I don't know, it's relief, and it's complete relief and complete release. What do you think of all this, Lisa? Of all what? Well, the, just the sort of the press madness. Like I just said, I think, you know, so to be, I'll be honest with him, if he gets, I hate to babble on about it, I'm sure he's sick of me saying it, but if he gets clean, I think all, the, all that stuff stops. They can't do yeah, it. No, There's a reason. Not. No, 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 Mick, I'm sorry. No, that no, is no, as simple as that. No, to be honest, if he did, it he was clean, it was he was fucking loaded with a junkie. national junkie. hero. It because it's all about, about, no, no, wasn't even ex-junkie. When I had my implant last year, it was still junkie. Yeah, yeah, but Peter, if you're honest, there was still the fucking the chaos. Do you know what I mean? It's like there was still stuff happening. Your life is still chaotic. If all that chaos disappears, all of that stuff disappears. I just think it's that simple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's that sad thing, or actually, with everybody concerned, it's. The impact is that really, when someone's in that state, they're kind of, it's about them. It's, it's, it's disease of addiction is, is a disease of self-centered kind of, you know, self-obsession, da, da, da. so it's all about that person. So the fallout of that is that, you know, it's, it's really, really draining, emotionally, mentally, and it's very tough, you know, on everybody concerned that's involved with him on whatever level it is. <laughs> an ordinary soldier. Was, when I was born, he was just like my well, squaddy, really. Was he? A, a sergeant or whatever. I lived in just a little, cool. you know what I mean? A little, a little terrace house on the barracks and 
He's from Council Estate in London, and Mum's from you know, 10,000 Anfield, Liverpool's like, they're both working class, but where he's worked his way up. By the time I was sort of 15, I think it was, he was getting commissioned, and it was a working class environment, it was like a soldier's environment, and probably by the time I left school, though, you know what I mean, I wouldn't, I don't think you could describe my, my dad as being my own class anymore. But did you go to a fee-paying school? Are you in a state school? Of course I did. Pardon? Of course I didn't go to a fee-paying school. My mum and dad couldn't afford it, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's like when you see it written down, like a major in the British Army, you know what I mean? It doesn't say that, you know what I mean, he's been commissioned and he's like a hands-on major, he's not. And what was your childhood? I mean, do, did you enjoy being a kid? So that's important to me, though, as well, you see. It's very important to me, especially with the kind of coverage I've been getting. Um, very class conscious. Uh, it doesn't matter to me how our people think of me, you know what I mean, when they decide themselves on meeting me or they sell themselves on reading lyrics or reading interview. But if they're told, you know, if they're misinformed and given the wrong information, it's like, it's, it's a kind of, like, once again, it's kind of vanity, where I like, it's not so much I want to manipulate the information that's given, but I want to certainly like, have a control over it. You know what I mean? I want to know what people know. And if but they, you don't they have know any control, really, do you? No. <laughs> that's where French Dog Blues is going to come in. Did you enjoy being being part of your family, really? Uh, I wouldn't have known what, what I'm going to say now is, is that I wouldn't know what this would have meant at the time, but I can probably say, like, representing my younger self, that I was uh, completely, I completely adored my dad. Mm. Yeah. I did absolutely idolise him. Well, you obviously still do. On Saturdays, it was like, if he was about, and he'd come back from doing the night shift, the guard shift, whatever, and he'd take me into Belfast or, or Lisbon, and he'd say, oh, don't tell your mum. And he'd go into the bookmakers and leave me in the little, the children's section of the library. Uh, this thin woman with glasses, she'd like, keep her eye on me and maybe half an hour. And then, like, later on that, that day, he'd say, oh, he'd be tucking me in or something because my mum must have been out somewhere. And he'd say, like, when my mum used to like, say a little prayer, he'd say, oh, our Father out in heaven, how'd I be thy name? Thy kingdom come, I will go and, and please let my horse come in tomorrow at Camp Day number three to go. And that, uh, I think about six or seven. And even now, I think, or well, the times before he's like, it's before he's kind of disowned me, when he sort of told me how he felt, it was always negative, trying to answer that, it was such bewilderment in his eyes, you know what I mean? I was, you know, not what I was contrary to what he was saying, or you know, have an idea of my own that didn't match his. It was such. You know, it was quite confusing to him, you know what I mean?
Singer Pete Doherty has pleaded guilty to five counts of possessing drugs, including heroin and cocaine. He was granted bail until September the 4th on condition that he stays and sleeps at the crime. He will be allowed out this Sunday to play a concert. So that you may not be the martyred slaves of time. You must get intoxicated. Get intoxicated and never pause for rest. With wine, poetry, or virtue, as you choose. I can hear you, I can hear you. The only being somebody who has caused you so much controversy. What are you saying to here? Oh my God. Oh my God. Welcome to the stage, Headline Media, Young P. Doherty and David Shepherds! Big up to the Priory, and the Probation Service, and the Metropolitan Police. Being clean. Um, well, maybe this will be alright. Do you know what I mean? I don't think the program of complete abstinence is for me yet. Do you know what I mean? I can't imagine not having a drink at the moment. Mm. <laughs> but um, it's beginning to dawn on me that I can't. Basically, can't smoke crack anymore. Can't air and just not just because the old girl is like. I can't believe I'm saying it really, but yeah, it's like fuck my life, fuck my life, fuck my head up. Um, it's 
So yeah, I'm waging a war kind of.
think the media is waiting for him to die. You know, I wouldn't be at all surprised if, if they had bets. You know, it's the end of the story. Um, Truman Capote, the American writer, wrote a book called In Cold Blood, um, in which he covered a murder trial. And at the end, he, uh, he couldn't wait for these, these boys, these convicted murderers, to be executed. He spoke about it. He needed them to be executed, so he had an ending. And um, I know, I know it's been talked about in newsrooms, when's Pete Doherty going to die? And what a story it will be. Oh, yeah. Don't worry about it, mate. Going. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Just adrenaline and all that, yeah? How fucking yeah. silly. Yeah. Wait, thank God.
and more for Pete Doherty fans as he talks candidly to Kirsty Walk over on BBC Four in just a moment. Coming next here on BBC Two, a double bill of arrested development. <laughs>